So, uh, here we are with Bob Rosenbaum and Michael Hoy, two of the three originators of single session therapy. Uh, we had uh, the conference, the third conference in single session therapy in Melbourne uh, weeks ago. And uh, now we have uh, just a few talks to talk about single session therapy stuff. So, uh, the first thing I want to ask you, to the both of you, is what do you think about single session therapy today? We just went to the conference and there were many people there and it was interesting. And so I was thinking about why don't more people embrace single session therapy, doing it one at a time. Each session will be a complete experience. And if we need another, we can do another. But why don't people, more people go one at a time? And as I was thinking about it, I think there's at least three and maybe four or five reasons. One is the theory of psychotherapy, that you have to go slow, you have to form a slow alliance and gradually uncover the problems. All of that. So one is, has to do with the theory. A second, I think people misunderstand the idea of single session therapy. We are not saying one at a time means only one time, that you can only have one chance. So sometimes I think peop people think we are overselling. We are saying it solves every problem in one visit. I've had these problems for many years. They're complicated. They're we're not saying that. We're saying people can get something done in one visit and maybe that's enough and then we can see. So I think the, the danger of overselling it. Uh, the third is money. Uh, when I talk to people who do single session therapy, they work uh, in a clinic, they see people one time, they work in employee assistance, they love single session therapy. Oh, people come in, they get help, many patients, many clients like it. When I talk to people in private practice, they go, one at a time, one session. No, I need to keep my regular customers coming for more money. Um, there has been a status game that long term is the best and short term is not so good and single session is just a band-aid. Uh, and I don't think that's true. And, and in fact, we know that most people do come for one time and get benefit. So I think we should recognize how much benefit people get. Oh, yeah. uh, that was my thought at the conference. Why isn't everybody doing this yeah. more yeah. rather than why do we have to promote it? Why aren't people just that much more interested? I think the one other thought, and I know I'm talking a lot, so let me just finish quickly. I think the one other thought I had was that students in school learned, when they learned models of psychotherapy, they don't hear a lot about brief and certainly not very brief or even single session therapy. So I think that's going to change in the curriculum, curricula at different universities when people begin to hear that one session could be the best and it should be the standard and can you help people quickly rather than four years later and five years later. So I think getting students to, to recognize, well, this is something I want to learn rather than, oh, that's that's not the the important thing. Okay. That, that was my take yeah. on it. Um, so th I think single session therapy today is uh, much like it was 30 years ago and much like it will be in 30 years, which is to say, uh, water is wet, the sky is blue, uh, regardless of what you think or do, I'm almost making poetry here, regardless of what you think or do, a lot of people come to therapy once and they feel better and they don't feel a need to come back. Hmm. That's always been true and it probably always will be true. Um, we've just started to realize that this happens and so the question uh, there's a couple of questions. One is, once you realize that this happens, the realization enables a few more clients to benefit from one session rather mm -hmm. than many. It's, it's not a huge amount. The research has shown maybe an increase of 10% or so. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
but why do not why doesn't uh, why isn't this more well known why don't people do it more um, therapists are very attached to being therapists mm. they like to think that they're the agents of change and Moshe who unfortunately couldn't be here I, I, I think the best thing he says to uh, students that I like to quote is he says to them remember therapy is not about you yeah. <laughs> and uh, people's egos get involved with well if, if I'm a good change agent you know you should be seeing me more it's mostly up to the client and up to life circumstances so it's humbling hmm. single session therapy is is a bit of a blow to the ego um, which is, of course, very healthy, but uh, a lot of people see it as a threat rather than as a relief. Well, during the um, the conference, we saw also something. I saw something interesting: uh, single session therapy with a uh, family with uh, a member of the family, uh, a psychotic member of the family. Uh, single session therapy in different cultures. Mm -hmm. Single session therapy with children and adolescents and for this problem and this other problem in a clinical setting and in uh, a working setting. Uh, did you, um, did you thought 30 years ago that single session therapy uh, um, had this future in front uh, and do you think that we need something else today for the development of single session therapy? I, I just recall that the, um, the symposium was single session thinking going global one step at a time. Um. I certainly did not e expect to see something like this conference because when Michael and Moshe and I first presented our work, we were soundly attacked. Uh, you're, you're not giving people what they need, you're just trying to save money, which we always said if people need or want more therapy, we'll provide it. But uh, people were very close to the idea. So it's, it's very nice to see people open to it and to see it spreading into other places. I think what single session therapy needs, and probably the field of therapy in general needs, is taking therapy out of the clinic setting and reaching people where they are. There's a, a huge need. A lot of people are in distress. The, one of the things I got from the conference which excited me was the idea of uh, possibly offering single session therapy in libraries. Hmm. And I thought, oh, for students in university, what could be better? For homeless people who often, in the United States at least, use libraries, what would be a good setting? And we're going to be offering therapy through the internet, um, we're going to be offering therapy at work settings, um, we, we need to rethink uh, where and how therapy occurs because um, change is happening all the time. The question is where and when and how to uh, take advantage yeah. of it. When we were in the hotel in Melbourne, uh, we were talking to the concierge about which restaurant to go to. And he said, oh, what are you doing here? And we mentioned we're here at a psychology conference. And he told us about a personal problem in his family and some people had died. And we were sympathetic and we assured him, well, of course you would feel sad and somewhat shaken given a number of people have died. It was um, therapy at the concierge desk. Yeah. Uh, and a friend of mine and I once, uh, and other people have done this too, Therapy in a taxi, you're talking to the taxi driver or the person next to you on the airplane or the train. Uh, traditionally, people, my understanding is, you would have a problem, you would go to the shaman or the priest or the healer or the wise woman or the wise man. 
and you would have a session, and you would have a meeting, you might prepare yourself, purify yourself, get ready, and you did not expect I'll go every week on Tuesday at 10 o'clock for six months or six years. No, I'm going to go and have an encounter and something that will give me ideas, that will give me inspiration, and I will work with it and take it and go. I know when I have a problem, I oftentimes, one of my friends will say, hey, let's go for a hike, or let's go for a walk, or let's go have lunch. And, you know, some we just talk, and then I'll say, you know, something I want to ask you about, or what should I do with this? Now, sometimes it's something I might want to talk to a professional about, but a lot of times I think it's friendship, it's communication, it's sharing, it's reassurance. Uh, we also now live more in a do-it-yourself culture. We make our own airplane reservations. We, Some of us read the manual and figure out how to make uh, the machines work in our house. Uh, so people have more of the idea, if I can get some information and some encouragement, I can uh, take the ball and run, we would say in English. I can handle this. I can go with it. Uh, in uh, Jerome Frank, a well-known uh, writer, he said, could it be that therapists are more interested in therapy than patients? You know, we want to, as Bob was saying, I want to be the center of it. I want to be the guru and wise and important. Um, they couldn't make a change without me. And it is something of a blow to realize, uh, maybe a little light touch, I added something, I was helpful, but mostly people, they heal themselves, they change themselves, they work on their own stuff. Uh, and so I think a lot of what single session therapy is, is saying there's this naturalistic process, this thing that happens, people making changes, and we try to facilitate that rather than we are at the center of it and we, it's because of us, it's not because of us, we're more the, uh, um, the facilitator, we're, we're the, the setting and we, we help people with it, but we're not the one doing it. Uh, and that's, that's a change from, uh, I'm going to be the wise person that makes things happen for people. Um, piggybacking on that, yeah. so you know I'm a, a Zen practitioner and teacher, and there's a Zen koan that I really like. Uh, it says, health and sickness subsume each other. They, health and sickness are two sides of the same coin, health and sickness complete each other. The next sentence, the whole world is medicine. Mm. And the last sentence, what is your true self? When you can approach the whole world as medicine, so that every person you encounter and everything you encounter is your teacher and you're its teacher, uh, this is a major transformation. The problem is people keep looking for the teacher, the answer, everywhere except uh, where they need to really look, yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> to their immediate experience. So the task of a therapist is to be a, a midwife. Imagine if midwives said, oh, nine months is not long enough for your pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a really good midwife. I think we can make the pregnancy go longer. <laughs> if it's just a, little, a few months longer, and your baby will be so much bigger, and it will be better when it comes out of the womb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this would not be so good, would it? Yeah. I, I also see that um, in psychotherapy, we are going... Um, I have to say, um, we are moving from a, um, a guru era, you know, a time in which uh, Milton Erickson or Steve DeShazer or Harun Beck or other strong personalities uh, was the center of the psychotherapy in a more integrated era. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? What do you think about this integration of different kinds of psychotherapy and how can single session therapy give um, its contribution? Bob is much more an expert on integration and work with the Society for Psychotherapy Integration. 
I just want to say that it's important to be inspired by your teachers mm -hmm. uh, and then let go of them and figure out how you will do it yourself with your, your client rather than I have to be like Aaron Becker or Steve DeShazer or Milton Erickson. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, otherwise you give your power away. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you think? Well, I agree with, with Michael. Um, I'd say the role of a teacher is to inspire mm -hmm. and then to disillusion your student <laughs> by being flawed and... What's that? Is this if you meet the Buddha on the road? <laughs> well, uh, the Buddha on the road is likely to have muddy feet. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so you should look at your own feet, of course. Um, so I, I think this is healthy. Uh, yeah. You also, in one of the papers, talked about um, intrinsic integration. Yeah. Yeah. What did you mean by intrinsic integration? Uh, yeah, so the, the paper's title, it, and it was in the Journal of Psychotherapy Integration, uh, was uh, single session therapy in intrinsic integration question mark. Yeah. And the basic point was if clients get better in one session, regardless of whether it's a psychodynamic therapist, cognitive behavioral therapist, systemic therapist, humanistic, whatever, um, one session isn't enough for the specifics of the modality of that school of therapy to really manifest themselves. Mm -hmm. Something else must be going on, and if we could really figure out what's going on in that one session, it would be perhaps the common factor of psychotherapy, um, uh, it, would, it would form the basis by which other many schools of therapy could kind of f find their foundation and then perhaps refine it from there. I actually had a discussion at the um, uh, conference with someone who asked about that and he said, well just because patients get better in one session, maybe the cognitive behavioral therapist is helping the, the patient get better in a cognitive behavioral therapy way, yeah. maybe the psychodynamic therapist is helping the patient get better in a psychodynamic way. And uh, that's a valid uh, critique. But it still leaves the question of what's at the root of those different mm -hmm. transformations. Yeah. And, and we don't know. It's also the idea of treatment, that we are treating them. Yes. It gets to a, a kind of a medical model, what dose of the right, you diagnose it and you give it the right treatment and it will fix it. Um, Maybe we should think of therapy as conversation. Yes. Maybe yeah. we should think of it as poetry. Yes. I think of it sometimes it's more like drama or theater, and maybe I'm the director trying to bring out a performance or evoke something from the person. Um, many, many, many years ago, I was involved in a psychotherapy research project. I was a postdoctoral fellow, and we developed the therapist action scale. Did you make an interpretation, a confrontation, a reassurance? What did you do? And so was it the number of times you did it? How well you did it? Uh, how much love did you give the person? That's right. Uh, what meaning uh, changed? What happened in the silence? Yes. Uh, so it's very difficult to say, to, to use one model, medicine, how much penicillin or what kind of surgery to do, and to apply it to something else. I think of, I've been on many panels Art or science? Is psychotherapy art or science? Mm -hmm. To me, it's craft and art. It's conversation. It's creativity. It's making meaning. It's poetry and beauty. It's magic. It can be studied scientifically. Oh, people like it this way a little more than they like it that way. You can study painting or music. Do people like it loud or soft or what yeah. color next to what other color? But I think once we buy into the model, then we get into what are the active ingredients and yes. what caused it. And, and, and so I think it's, it's good to open, uh, um, we were talking the other day, if someone went to a, uh, a 
tr healer in a different tradition than the Western tradition, uh, the conversations we would have would not make a lot of sense to them. Uh, yeah. uh, that's all I want to say. Yeah, well, and because of what Michael was saying, I like to insist that uh, insurers must only pay for therapies which are EVTs, hmm. aesthetically validated treatments. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, uh, right. Is it beautiful? Does it capture the ear? Yeah. Does it have a, a, a nice taste to it? Does it, uh, yeah. does it make you lean forward? Does yeah. it engage you? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be a, yes. uh, an important criteria. That is an important yeah. criteria for me. Uh, otherwise, you know. And, and as you know, uh, I strongly advocate looking to the arts because the arts have languages of technique, mm -hmm. of, of how one structures a painting, how one structures a musical ending, uh, how one structures a musical beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a certain theme in music is appropriate for one kind of treatment and not another. Okay. And if, if one thinks of clients coming in with uh, a musical motif, or a, uh, a certain quality of light on an object, as one might with painting. They're playing a dirge, yeah. and they're always in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so a dirge, it just made me think, the, the Beethoven, the second movement of the Eroica Symphony is a oh. funeral march, and somehow the funeral march gets transformed yeah. In the process, into something noble, you know, and well, how could one do that uh, with a client who is uh, mourning mm -hmm. and in grief and uh, finding the nobility in our suffering without getting attached to it? Yeah, uh, it's part of the process. I think this whole area of single session therapy is very exciting because it's bringing in so many ideas, concepts, models, um, and as it gets to be more, we're going global, it was the yeah. theme of the last conference, so we're going to hear about it from other cultures and other ways of thinking, <clears throat> not just uh, cognitive behavioral, psychodynamic, strategic, interactional, narrative, solution focused, uh, you know, just not just the Western flavors. Uh, I think it expands us as people. Yeah. It gets us to think, think about other ways of being human. Yeah. I think we have to learn about other people and from other people so that we grow and expand. It's not just to find out about them so we can fix them but find out from them so that we can work on ourselves more and just, just to grow in different ways. Yeah. And which, I, yeah. uh, which is why um, I'm just kind of rephrasing some yes. of what you've said. Um, therapists are always worried about what to do uh -huh. with a client rather than how to be with a client. and. One of the things I've learned from single session work is maybe the best question to ask yourself before a session is not oh, what should I do, but uh, how can I enjoy being with this person during this session? Yeah. In one of your books, maybe Zen and Psychotherapy, I'm not sure, you mentioned client comes to the room, you sort of silently bow to them, maybe not in a way that they see it that says no, no. to them, but you're orienting yourself to how you're going to be with them and to be open to them and receptive to them and recognize them. As, uh, and, and I would ask, how can I enjoy myself mm -hmm. with this person? And when I first started doing that, the first reaction was, you got to be kidding, Bob. No way you're going to enjoy being with this person. You know what they're like. They're one of the... But I went, no. There's, there's got to be a way, and if I can't find ways of enjoying my work, I'm going to quit. Um, and an interesting thing happened, which was when I started looking for ways to enjoy the, uh, my clients, um, I f usually would find them, and the clients liked being enjoyed. 
Mm -hmm. And they became more enjoyable in yeah. response. And it became much more of a feeling of a collaboration that we're both playing with this issue and working on it together. And uh, it, 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 a genuine joy. How many clients come to therapy feeling not good about themselves? Yeah. So if you say you, you should feel better about yourself, you know, I mean, just let's, let's look at it rationally is it's okay, but for you to actually enjoy them lets them know hmm. that they're a person. They, they it takes an effort sometimes. Oh, Sorry, yeah. This is stuff on. It takes an effort sometimes to, what can I appreciate? What can I like? I know in my presentation at the last conference, I quoted Jay Haley and said, when Jay was asked, if there was only one thing you could teach your students, what would it be? Jay answered without hesitation, love. I would teach them to love their clients. Once you love your client, everything else falls into place. He didn't mean sex or romance. He meant love, deep respect, seeing something good in the person. Uh, and sometimes, you know, that that's difficult to do. But if you can't find something good about them that, that you like, they're going to sense it too, that you're kind of, you're holding your nose, you're, you're yeah. tolerating yeah. them, or it's, they're not good. So I think that's the... That's part of it is to find more, you know, just, if I can enjoy it, they'll enjoy being enjoyed, they'll be more enjoyable, when they're more enjoyable, we'll build a positive instead of just trying to grind down a negative. Right, and so I have a rule of thumb which is if I can't or when I can't find something enjoyable because the client is so difficult, then I enjoy the difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <that's laughs> and enjoying the difficulty is, if you can't enjoy your difficulties in life, you're going to be miserable at least a goodly part of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would have said if I can't find something enjoyable, I'm going to think about referring them. But that's even much better. I'm going to enjoy God, it's clever the way they block that. And that's yeah. really interesting how, how brilliantly they can hold on yeah. to something. And, and these are the people we like to talk about at the water cooler. You say, oh, you wouldn't believe the client yeah. I had to sit with. It's, yeah. What a gift they're giving you, yeah. <laughs> something to yeah. talk about with your colleagues. <laughs> I know we're going to need to stop in just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. Um, actually, I really would like to continue forever, probably. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like it was, the eternal uh, single session. The eternal thing, the eternal, no eternal limit thing. single session. Maybe we'll have the next conference in the eternal city, Rome. Yeah, Rome. Oh, oh, man. So it will be and the and eternal. And yeah. with you and you. Uh, but eternal doesn't mean going on for a long time. Yeah. Eternal means timeless. Yeah. No beginning, no end. Yeah. Single session now. Yeah. <laughs> by walk-in or appointment ready when you are. If not now, when? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I see you in Italy, in Rome, in a few years. Thank you for your time and for everything you do and Later. you did in single session therapy. Yeah.